I like my paper to stay flat when I work on it so I always stretch it before I paint it but I get tired of doing that all the time so that's why I love painting on ash watercolour board because it's thick and I don't have to stretch it first but they don't make it anymore so I've been looking for an alternative and I found a product made by Dayla Rowney it's called Langton Prestige watercolour board and this week I painted this budgerigar on it I bought a full sheet of this Langton board and I cut it down to try it out. Like the Arsh watercolour board, it's thicker than ordinary watercolour paper and you don't need to stretch it. It's ready to paint on when I am, which is what I want. This is rough paper. I don't normally paint on rough paper, but it's all that they had online. Even though it's rough, the surface feels more like cold press paper to me. After doing this painting, I'm fairly happy with the paper and I quite enjoyed painting on it. It takes a little bit of getting used to. When you switch from one paper to another, you need to give yourself some time to adjust to the new surface. The colours on the final painting are lovely and bright and there was only one little area on the painting that I struggled with. The first thing I did was tape off the edges with some washi tape and then I used my paddle brush to paint a splash of colour on the background. I'm using Windsor Lemon and also a green that I mixed. Then I painted a wash of Windsor Lemon all over the budgerigar. Straight away I could feel that the paint was going onto the paper really well so the pigment was evenly distributed. It was quite easy to paint on. I found that my edges stayed crisp and clean. The colour was vibrant. Everything was looking good at this stage. I was quite happy with it. I've got my pencil work on the wing quite noticeable there. I'll be using black on there so most of that's going to get covered up. The wing is quite intricate so I wanted to know exactly where I was going to put the black paint. After I got the yellow wash on there I dried it off with my hairdryer and then I re-wet it with water and I mixed up a green. This is a green that I made from Windsor Lemon and French Ultramarine Blue. I also made a brighter green from Thallo Blue and Windsor Lemon. So this is the green that I mixed up with French Ultramarine and Windsor Lemon first. And then I put the brighter green over the top. Here it is here. I still wanted to see bits of the yellow paint showing through so I didn't want to completely cover that yellow wash that's underneath. So, so far so good. I was quite happy with the way it was accepting the water and the paint. Once I got that green on there, I started to dry it off. And then when it was almost dry, I dropped in some more water to try and create some watercolour blooms. That will create some texture on the front of the bird. Those blooms are dry now and I thought I'd try and soften the edge of some of them. I don't normally do this, I usually leave it as it is. But I thought that I'd try and soften it just a bit and I wanted to see how the paper would react. And what I found here was that even though the paint was completely dry, it was very easy for me to disturb it. And I could see myself getting in a bit of a mess with it if I wasn't careful. Then I thought I'd try to take a bit of colour off the head. I thought it came off fairly easily on the green feathers so I should be able to get some of it off here. So I'm wetting it with water here. This is with my soft brush. And I'm going to use a tissue to dab off some of the pigment. And that will lighten up that section of the head. I'll use a tissue now 
and that's removed a little bit of colour there. Then I put a bit more colour back along the front near the sear. Paint's going on really nicely there. Down here on the green part of the Bajrika, this is where I started to get into trouble in this little corner here where my hand is. I put some more paint there because I wasn't happy with the way that it had dried. But then I found that the more I fussed with this little area, the worse it got. So the paint wasn't sinking down into the paper the way I'm normally used to when I work on my ash paper. So here is where I discovered that it was going to take a bit of getting used to. I was going to have to alter the way I painted slightly. You can see I'm getting into a bit of a patchy mess there. So that was something I wasn't used to. I decided to leave that area alone and I'll come back and deal with it later. And I started to put some colour underneath the feathers. This is green gold that I'm using. I'm separating one feather from the other and it's creating a little shadow underneath each feather. When I put the paint on there, then I take my damp brush and I smooth it out. And this is what I normally do on my other paper and it was working out okay. I added a bit of a shadow around the beak as well. I'm still using green gold here. I wet the paper first and then I put the paint on. That gives me those soft edges. Then I started to paint on the black spots on the cheek feathers. I painted those on dry paper and that all went on really well, no problems there at all. I painted in the eye and then I thought I'd take my silver scrubber brush. This is a really stiff brush. And I thought I'd try it on the paper to see if it was going to be tough enough to withstand this brush. This brush I use wet and it takes a little bit of paint off. The paper's dry. You've got to be really gentle with it because it can damage the paper. Now it is peeling a little bit. You can see little, little bits of paper coming off there. But... Once I wiped those away, the paper still looked okay. When I use these brushes, I only rub very gently with them. So I'm wetting it with my softer brush again. Just seeing what it looks like. Take off those little bits of paper that have come off. And the surface looks okay. So I don't know how it would handle another wash over the top of that because I didn't try that because I wanted the paper lighter here. I don't think it's as tough as my ash paper, but it's certainly not as fragile as some papers that I've used. Here I am fussing with this area that I didn't like before. I'm just putting a bit more paint on there now on the dry paper. Here I'm using my little eradicator brush to take off a bit of paint. And that's coming off quite easily. Then I paint it on the black spots on these cheek feathers. I do this on the dry paper as well. It started to come to life once I put the eye on and these cheek spots. I've just finished painting in this sea with some French ultramarine and now I'm using my damp brush to see if I can take a highlight off along the top. The paint is still wet and my brush is just slightly damp and that's coming off quite easily. Then I started to paint the stripes on the head. I wet the paper here first. And I've got some lamp black on my brush. I'm dotting that onto my pencil line. I want the paint to bleed slightly. So I want soft fuzzy edges on the line. 
I did the same sort of thing on the cat painting that I did last week. So when I do this I've got to be careful that I don't have too much water in my brush otherwise the paint will spread too far. I want a soft fuzzy line but I don't want the paint to get away from me. Then I dried those lines off and I got some more black paint. This time I used darker pigment and I took the excess moisture out of my brush. I tapped it on the side and then I came back over the top of them on the dry paper and I darkened them. So I can still see those little soft fuzzy edges but it's got areas of darker paint through it now. So if you're looking for detail this can be time consuming but it's quite effective when it's finished. After I finished all the stripes on the head I went ahead and started painting all the black markings on the wing feathers. I painted these on dry paper. This is why I shaded those areas in on my line drawing. I didn't want to lose track of where I was. My pencil lines were showing through in a few places underneath the black so I had to come back and give it another layer or two over the top. I also painted a few shadows on the feathers to lift them off one another. And then I was finished. So I peeled the washi tape off and that's ready for a frame now. Overall I was quite happy with the paper because the only area that gave me trouble was that little top section on the green feathers. Even though the paint was dry on that area, it just didn't want to sit where I put it. When I wet that area again, that layer of paint came off and you could see that I was getting in a bit of a mess. So I'll have to paint on it a few more times before I make my mind up about it, but it looks promising. I'm going to make a full length tutorial of this painting and I'll put it on Patreon in a month or so when I'm finished making it. Thanks for watching. As always I'm very grateful when you hit the like button and if you don't subscribe to my channel already please do because I post watercolour videos like this one every week. I'll see you next week. A product made by Dayla Rowney. It's called Langton Prestige watercolour paper. Bought. After doing this painting I'm fairly happy with the paper and I'm quite happy Here's sticking up again. Overall I was quite happy with the paper. Overall I was quite happy with the paper because the only area that gave me trouble was that little What's with all the dust? The colours are really vibrant and fresh and lovely and look great. As always, I'm very grateful when you hit the like button and if you don't subscribe to my channel, please do. As always I'm very grateful when you hit the like button and if you don't subscribe to my channel already why not? Why not? What are you waiting for?